Well, greetings everybody and welcome back. This is going to be kind of a short video. I just need a little bit better weather to finish up a couple of fiberglassing issues and then I'll have another one for you, hopefully here in less than two weeks. It's otherwise ready to go. But I wanted to get a quick video out to you of some things I thought might be of interest to you, especially if you're trying to get some DIY work done to get your boat in the water this spring. I'm going to be making some new gaff jaws for the Harris Off America, which I'm going to need to do for the Eagle as well, so this will be good practice. And I'm going to be making some new mast hoops, which I found a much easier way to make. Both of these are going to need a really solid, tough finish, and I'm going to show you what I use for that as well. In one of my first videos, I tried to restore the gaff jaws that came with the boat. They were in tough shape, but after I sanded them down and refinished them and redid the hardware, they seemed to be okay, but unfortunately after two years, they just finally gave up the ghost. Gaff jaws that have a curve in this area, I think, tend to have a weak area, and you can see right here, it's split right open right along the grain. There's no fix to that, so it's time to work up a new set. This time I wanted to try and do something a little bit different. I wanted to try some gaff jaws that didn't have the curve in it. So one of the first things I did was drop a new set on Fusion 360 and then have it generate some G-code and send it out to a CNC router that I made over the winter. At this point I'm just cutting out a template to see how well the shape works out of some quarter inch plywood. Once I compared it to the shape and direction of the old gaff jaws and put it up against where the bolts would go and make sure that the mast would fit and all that good stuff, I made a few adjustments and adaptations to the design and regenerated the G-code and sent it out to the CNC. I'm cutting the gaff jaws out of a piece of white oak that I'd salvaged from another project, but it's a beautiful piece of wood. It's definitely old. I always encourage people to try and use reclaimed lumber. You get a lot of character out of it, and I think it's a wise use of these resources. These gaff jaws are going to require a lot of protection because they're going to be out in the weather, they're going to receive a lot of UV light, and they're just going to get banged around a lot. So I'm going to use a product I've used before called Halcyon from Total Boat. They have two versions of this, a clear and an amber. I'm using the amber for this one. And I can say after using this for a couple of years, it is an extremely tough finish. I've used it on the sole of the cockpit, hatch covers, wooden blocks for the rigging. This stuff is tough. In addition, it offers superior UV protection to anything else I've ever used. It's also easy to apply. It's an aqueous-based solution, so all you need to do is clean it up with some water and you're good to go. So for non-teak-type wood finishes, this is my go-to product and I highly recommend it. The amber finish of this product on the antique oak I think looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. Now, one of the issues that I've found with my particular Harris Off America is the chafing I get on the gaff jaws from the shrouds. I know cat boats aren't supposed to have shrouds, but I think because of the tabernacle mast, this one does. And every time they rubbed up against it, it would scrape against them, it would get caught on the bolts. So I decided for some added protection to add some shielding along the side made out of some copper. For my budget as well as accessibility, I had to do a little bit of thinking outside the box as to where I was going to find some copper plate to do this. So I decided to just use some 3 quarter inch copper pipe from the big box stores. Just cut it down the middle with an angle grinder and a diamond blade. And then just use my bench vise or whatever else I had to start to open it up a little bit. Once I got it open a little bit, you can just pound it out with a rubber mallet on some concrete to flatten it out a bit. And it took a little while with some rubber mallets and a ball peen hammer, some vices, and some clamps to just begin to form the copper around the shape of the gaff jaws. After I got the rough shape down, I put a brass brush on my drill press and just buffed it out a little bit. But I was still going for kind of a rustic look, so I didn't want it to look perfect. 
After that, I cut out a couple of more pieces of white oak to make a spacer for a block that went on top of the gaff jaws for the throat halyard. Some more coats of Halcyon, and it's time to put the whole thing together. I'll be using bronze thread rod as well as some stainless steel hardware for the gaff jaws. One of the problems I had before though was that the shrouds kept getting caught up in all of the hardware, but I really can't use wood plugs to go down into these holes. There still would be too much of a cavity down there, and I really wanted to be able to seal this up well. So I decided to use these 3 quarter inch copper tubing end caps. They fit down into the hole perfectly. Now I just needed to fill it up. So to fill, seal, and waterproof the hole and all the hardware in it, I'm going to use another Total Bolt product called Thixo. This is their fast cure version of this product. It's a pre-thickened epoxy you can use in a caulk gun. One of the neat things about it is it mixes as it goes through these special tips that they send you with your order. Another nice thing about it is if you don't use the entire tube, when you need to use some more, just take the old tip off, put a new one on, and you're able to use the old tube. Not a situation where you have to use the entire thing at once. I like that a lot. Another thing I like about this product is it stays where you put it. It doesn't run, it doesn't drip, so it's excellent for applying to non-horizontal surfaces. That comes in very, very handy. So I just apply it to fill up the hole, drop in one of the copper caps, and then apply just a little bit more around the edge to seal it and clean up any excess with a rag and some acetone. I'll apply also a little bit to the bottom of the spacer. Even though this is mechanically going to be held in place by stainless steel bolts, I'm going to apply a little bit to help waterproof and seal up the area between the gaff jaw and the spacer for the block, and apply just a little bit more around the edges to seal it up. A couple of minor things to do to clean it up, but I think it came out fantastic. I'm really happy with it. So hopefully I'll be able to get her in the water soon, give it a try, and see how it works. And now on to the mast tubes. I basically did this the traditional way that I had seen done on YouTube and other shipwrights. By wrapping a piece of either soaked or steamed wood around a form, the form being in the center. The problem I had with this is it always fought against the natural tendencies of the wood to want to expand back open. Once I finally got them done, I realized this was an incredibly cumbersome way to do it. Having to stop, grab a clamp, put it on there, risk losing the tension that was on it. It was a mess, and it took a long time, and even though I got what I needed out of it, I really wasn't happy with the way I was doing it. I knew I'd have to make more someday, and I really wasn't looking forward to it, so I decided to think about this and see what I could come up with a little bit better. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to do this before, it's so pathetically simple, but instead of using a form that's in the center that you have to wrap around and try to clamp onto, I'm going to use a form that allows the natural tendency of the wood to spring out to hold it in form. This is done with an incredibly simple jig by just a flat piece of wood and some pieces of 2x4 that form up the circle. Then you coil the wood down inside of it and let the spring action of the wood hold it in place. Much, much simpler. The next step is to cut the very, very thin pieces of wood I'm going to use to make the mast hoops. Ideally, you want to use wood that hasn't been kiln dried. Once it's been kiln dried, the lignin in the wood is kind of baked in and it's very difficult to get it to bend. The only alternative is to cut it extremely thin, which is what I had to do since my local wood store, great though it is, doesn't have any non-kiln dried wood. I decided to give hickory a try for this. It's a tough wood and it should also be pliable enough when it's wet to bend. Now the only way i found to cut very, very thin strips of wood like this is this method on the table saw. I demonstrated this in a previous episode, but here's the gist of it. I have a magnetic feathering board that I place to the left of the blade, just enough so it holds the wood about an eighth of an inch to the left of the blade. Lining it up with the blade and the feather board, I bring the fence in to give it a nice snug fit. Run it through. Turn the blade off. And then place the piece of wood then up against the feather board again and bring the fence in from the right to snug it back up. It's the only way I've found to get both a consistent and extremely thin piece of wood. 
It's not the usual way you'll cut a piece of wood on a table saw, so be extra careful with it. If anybody else has any techniques on how to cut extremely thin pieces of wood like this, let me know. Once they're cut, I placed them in an old gutter that I recently took off my house to let them soak for a while. Now like before, I'm going to use a polyurethane based glue. Gorilla glue in this case, and you can get it pretty much anywhere. One of the unusual features of polyurethane glue is it only cures in the presence of moisture. Unlike a lot of other glues that require the surface to be dry, this one requires it to be wet, so it's perfect. Once I laid down a little bead of glue along the strip, I just put the strip in there and began carefully winding it around. Now it still is a little bit of a struggle, but it's a heck of a lot easier than the other method that I did. Once it started to go in, I could actually start to push against it to firm it up and take out any gaps, which was a lot easier than trying to clamp them out from the previous method I'd used. I added a few clamps just to keep everything nice and tight and let it cure for overnight. Coming back, it was a little stuck to the form, so I used a chisel to just knock it out there a little bit, but it came out pretty easily and I am really impressed. This is an extremely easy way to make these mast hoops and it came out perfect. I took it over to the sander and started to clean it up a little bit. The hickory was really looking sharp. I sanded out all the pieces and rounded over the corners. And again, this is a part of the rigging that's gonna be exposed to the elements an awful lot. So I'm gonna use Halcyon again on this. It's going to be able to take all the chafing that the mast and the other rigging is going to put on them, as well as protecting it from UV. Now that's about as good as a mast hoop as you're ever going to see. So if you need some mast hoops, maybe give this way a try. There is something really cool about being able to look at parts on your boat and realize that you made them. In the next episode, I'm going to be doing some more work with the Total Boat Thixo. First, to help a friend of mine fix a seam that opened up in the hull of his Harrisoff America, as well as to continue work on the Harrisoff Eagle that I'm working on, which will include filling in the voids created by the rod underneath the deck from where the chain plates leak, and a little more work with some fairing compound and finally laying down some glass. Remember in the show notes below, there's a discount code for any purchases you make from Jamestown Distributors or Total Boat. A hearty thank you and tip of the hat to Brian Lewis, my newest patron. Thank you very much, and thank you to everyone who helps me out on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated. I hope everybody's doing well and gets back out on the water soon. Take care, keep calm, and work on your boat.